Hello everybody and welcome. This is MFO Total Access. That's Terry Babalus. This is Will Power. And who's this on the back of your jersey? My boy Tua. Let's go, boys. I and ordered ladies like, Cooper and Rush. Gents. It didn't come yet. You ordered Cooper Rush? Yeah, I was gonna wear it. Because you I know what? I didn't want to take, I didn't take the, the, the. I want to give you your time, you know? Thank you. Because it might only last a week. Folks, how about them Dolphins? Come on now. Rock and roll. Also, how about them Cowboys? Like, almost just as Terry, impressive. you guys almost won by three against Cincinnati who has no O line. With, like, a backup quarterback who's like. Some people think shouldn't even be in the league. Fair. Yeah. You guys are one and one. Yeah. We're two and zero. Oh. Okay. First in the division right now, eh? Yeah, I, but I thought Tua couldn't throw the deep ball. I never said he couldn't. No, no, no. I'm just saying in general. They said Tua can't throw deep. Yeah. Well, didn't he also like miss some wide open receiver? It was a lot of this <laughs> and a lot of waddling. Let's go, baby. Fins up. I said uh, they're first in the division, but if the Bills, because right now it's this is like at least Wednesday, but we're filming before the Monday night games. Yeah. We're actually filming a little bit earlier than usual. That's true. Got to go to bed early tonight. Yeah. Get tomorrow. It's true. My boy's getting surgery tomorrow at 7.30. That's well, not... Tomorrow being Tuesday. Yeah, tomorrow being Tuesday. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So when you guys see this, I, I'll i be sleeping probably. It's true, <laughs> not eh? Moving. With uh, your crutches and everything. Yeah. Uh, so it was a big day this past weekend on Saturday. Uh, it was Kevin Cousy's birthday. It was. <laughs> not on Saturday. Yeah, on, on Saturday. On the day. Why didn't anybody tell me? You don't have him in, um, on Facebook? No, I don't. Okay. Well, he got two fat L's for his birthday. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, surprise, surprise. <laughs> Shoot, happy birthday, Kevin, though. Wish I knew. Yeah. Um, yeah, you weren't there, eh? I wasn't there Saturday. Got a lot to catch up on. Uh, heard there was a lot of news, a lot of big games, some upsets. Yeah. Unfortunately, there was some injuries. injuries. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, definitely we'll talk about it later on. But yeah, no, big, uh, big D in the MFL on uh, this past Saturday. So, do you want to get right into it? How many games did you ref? Four. And four or five, four. And the other one, you just like were chilling. No, I had uh, something. A wedding. No, you left early An though. Engagement dinner. Okay, so <laughs> basically a wedding. <laughs> yeah, it's that time of the year. Well, gotcha. now it's over, I think. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Um. So we get right into it. Do you want or yes, you other we, questions? No, we're not back to the bear this week. It's the next week, right? Yeah, so we're still at Arthur Terry. Last week at Arthur Terry, folks, this Saturday. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, share it to your family. Do the usual. <laughs> Do the shit to your grandparents, anybody. Yeah. All right. So for the third time, do you want to start D1 or do you want to... Let's go D1, baby. Okay. Um, Outlaws Trollers? Cre- were you... No, obviously you weren't reffing No, but game. I caught some bits and pieces of you it. You go first. Oh, but before, I-, I was not reffing that game because I would think reffing an Outlaws game would not be okay. Which it wouldn't be. But uh, the refs on this game got a lot of hate. And a lot of players came up to me knowing that I'm the assigner now to let me know why did I put those guys on the game. The guys being? We'll talk about that after. Okay. And then I just let them them know, like, look around who the refs are on the other fields and would you rather have those guys? And the answer were no. So basically you just dissed six refs. No, because we have more experienced refs. Like, just, just because... You're not the most experienced refs. If those are the refs I have available, I still put the most experienced refs available on the highest division game, right? Definitely a political correct answer. And I would not put myself. But then it made me ask the question, like, would it have been more legit if I was there or if that ref was there, you know? Right. I still think it was not. But yeah. then if they're complaining to that extent, I'm wondering, like, I, I, I just see it, like, as a lose-lose. They complain either way, right? Right. Like, I think, like... Exactly. Even if you think of the quote unquote worst ref in, in MFL, which you'd is rather, there's not a bad ref in MFL, yeah. you'd rather that person ref than you yeah. for that game. I just think it's. Do fair. you agree with that? Yeah. Okay. So like, if you're refing a game and you see the like, refs blind making horrible calls, and then you're playing against the outlaws, it, and it's, it's going both ways, right? Like, yes. I, I don't think play, people are complaining that one team was better than the other. I think they were calls. complaining it was missed calls both ways. Like, no one said that you got the advantage. I, I think it was both ways. Uh, so you'd rather that than. Me, who's maybe a more experienced referee, refing that game, knowing that I played on Outlaws for... You know. I think it's only fair. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that, and that's why I did it that way, but mm-hmm. just... I, I, we're doing the best we can with the, with the availability we, we have, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sure. Um, so yeah, this game, 48-44. Troller's first loss in the season. Yeah. Um, crazy how Outlaws lose to Cox and then need to beat the Wolves or else their season's over, and then they just beat the... Winless uh, trollers. I really, really think this division one, like we spoke about it last year for division one and two. Mm. There were six teams in each division. There were five playoff teams in each of those divisions. 
I'm, well, yes. I'm excluding Bitter Boys from the D1 and Nice Leafs from the D2 last year. Like five teams uh, that had a chance to make yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, from before the season started yeah. up until like every single week. There was never yeah. a doubt that... Uh, you never thought that one of those two teams would have made the playoffs. And For sure. You never could have confirmed at any point besides like the last week. And even until like the last... Even after the last week when the playoffs started, <laughs> yes. there was still a change. <laughs> so you never could have confirmed who those four teams would have been. Correct. Right now in D1, there's literally six teams who could legitimately make the playoffs. Like a solid six. Yeah. Like it was not a great, it's not a great start for Centurions overall. And no. it's, they're really on the outside looking in right now. Yeah. But it's not what we thought would have happened. And you no. still wouldn't be surprised if they could pull three, four wins. Definitely not. The they also off. haven't had their roster yeah. that consistently so like, this season. You can make it like how some players and teams are making a case. Five teams should make it in last year. Mm-hmm. You can make a strong case that six teams can make yeah. it in this year, right? First two teams get a bye. It's been exciting. Super, super exciting. Yeah. And I think that like... Whenever you're talking about the Outlaws needing to win, not to necessarily save their season, but to get on the winning track, like that's when you know it's kind of a different year in Division One. Yeah. Right? And with the Holy Trollers, like that rival between the Outlaws. Like Outlaws were underdogs coming into this game, right? Which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I picked the, the Trollers in this one. Everyone morning. besides me picked the Trollers. I think the, the Trollers were missing uh, a few guys. I don't think it was one of like, their Kiki guys. I think uh, they were missing Lesniak and Josh. Okay, right. So but still they had, two uh, pieces. Phil Farrand and uh, Vincent Dion sub. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Two studs, regardless. Yeah. Uh, looking at the stats, I saw one play. I saw, uh, I think, uh, Steve's only interception is, like, I think the only play I saw. It was a pick six <laughs> to Sean Haney. Damn. Yeah, a really nice pick. And also, props to Steve, because he threw two... I saw two of his pick sixes this past weekend, and both of them, he, he ran down to, like, almost a, the touchdown line. Oh, to, like, try and tackle Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's respect. Like, that's really respect, because I saw other quarterbacks yeah. not do that. For sure. It's kind of easier, especially with how old Steve is. Yeah, like, you kind of want to score. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff, man. And um, looking at the stats here, like, look at Steve's completion to attempts versus Max's. Like, not, they both have, I think, similar percentages, but Steve completed 44 passes <laughs> out of 59 attempted. Max, 21 for 30. Steve literally had twice as many. Twice as many attempts, as many completions. Like, how did that happen? I guess it just shows that like Max loves the deep ball, <laughs> yeah. and if he's completing a pass, it's gonna be from minimum of twenty but yards. Literally two times more. Yeah, that's no, that's actually nuts. Like to throw fifty nine balls in a game, it's bananas. To complete forty four, and we know he's been throwing a little bit deeper later on in his career, so it's not as if like he just sticks to the triple slants. He's able to spread the ball too, like down the field and push it down. So yeah. that's like remarkable stat. Marvin and Jaff both with fourteen receptions. That's that's his, like honestly, that is like the Waddle and. Tyree kill game from yesterday. Two, For real. Two guys with 14 receptions. That's 28 catches from just two players. And you saw Smuda with seven. There you go. And Smuda with 122 yards. Yeah. And three touchdowns. Yeah. And That's Marvin incredible. four. It's unbelievable. It's as if, like, I talk about games like this often. It's as if this game was two games in one. Yeah. Like, how did that many well, Some guys don't get those stats in the whole season, right? Yeah. Touche. And then on the other side of the ball, uh, JC, Phil, Rooney, balled out. Uh, um... 77, 76, and 51 mm-hmm. yards. All of them scoring at least a touchdown. Impressive. Uh, yeah, this game, 48-44, uh, we were expecting a close game, right? We were, and I think that it's kind of indicative of how Division One is now that no one, no one's undefeated, right? Like, I think yeah. this makes sense. Like, there's no clear-cut number one. Like, if you're doing power rankings now... Look, I just said Outlaws lost to a winless team, because I think Lecoq were winless, right, when they beat Outlaws last week? Yes, they were. When they, they lost won. to a winless team, they just beat an undefeated team. Like, there you go. That's how close this division is, right? So I think it's tough to have, like, I'm curious to see Kevin's power rankings for this week. I, I think you would well, have to put not, Outlaws not as if you put very, a lot of credibility. No, no, no. It, like, no, what I'm saying is whatever Kevin would put, it would, it would be not that. Yeah, like, let's so see what he it. had last week. He had Trollers, 18 Outlaws. Trollers and 18 both lost, Outlaws won. So it would, be, it would make sense for the Outlaws to be one. I think they would because they just beat the Trollers. But I, I would have then, Trollers at two. And then what do you have, Gold Cook? At three. We beat the Outlaws that are one. Gold Cook would have to be at three. Okay. I, I think... It, you could easily make an argument that, like, uh, Gold Cook could be one since they beat the Outlaws and they just came up uh, for a win with against A-Team, right? That's true. Uh, well, at the same time, Trollers just have one loss in the season. Right. Like, which team... <laughs> like, yeah, right now, Outlaws are slightly hotter than Trollers since they just won. Yeah. But you can't say that Gold Cook would lose to Outlaws right now either since no. they literally just beat them. And you can't say that Outlaws would necessarily beat the last place Centurions team either. No. Which is pretty, like, yeah. remarkable. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the Gold Cook, uh, Tommy had a Hall of Fame type of game. Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> um, catching eight balls for sixty-five yards, one touchdown, and on defense, um, he had a crazy interception. 
So Dom Lafour threw his first intercept, first and only interception of the game. Okay. And on the very, very, very next play, <laughs> yeah. Dylan throws a like a dart. Like he literally threw it. Like you know, Dylan, Dylan has a good yeah. arm. We'll talk about why Dylan was quarterback yeah. in just a second. Yeah. I had to give Tommy his uh, his fame for this game for sure. Uh, getting into the Hall of Fame, um, and he literally would look like he made a a sideline toe drag. <laughs> Crazy catch. Like he caught the ball. The ball was out of bounds. He caught the ball out of bounds, two feet in on the sideline. It was a sick catch. Like Nate Burleson told Jack Swag. Yeah, it was a sick catch, and he made it on defense. Like, which makes that yeah, much yeah, more yeah. crazy. For sure. So, like, uh, and, yeah, he caught, like, a a, a deep post uh, in the first half for 37 yards. You like that. A guy that's in the Hall of Fame that's not slacking. He's going to use it even more to play even harder. Yeah, not just he's in the Hall yeah. of Fame, he's going to sit back. No, no, for sure. Like some of those NFL guys that get the big contract, they decide to chill, stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah. he's doing the opposite. Yeah. It's funny how, like, in the NFL, you get in the Hall of Fame and you could keep playing, whereas in the NFL, you got to be retired for a little <laughs> while. <laughs> That's um, what great NFL is. Yeah. Vince also balled down in this game. 11 catches, 91 yards, two touchdowns. Solid, man. Solid, um, solid. On defense, your boy Kareem, 16 tackles. That I is... literally think he had more than that. Like, he was tackling everything. So, I saw him later that night on Saturday, and he says, you know, I got 16 tackles in the game against uh, Go Clock. I said, what do you mean 16 tackles? Like, yeah. in one game, he's like, yeah. I was like, I don't even know how that's possible. And these guys, are, these are fast players. They're not easy to tackle. Yeah, uh, Laurent Devin were uh, alternating at rusher, and they did a okay. fairly good job containing Dom on like getting yards past line of scrimmage. Dom okay. only got fourteen yards on six six attempts. Like yeah. that's an average of below three. So that's like a huge, huge win. Win. but like Dom was buying, buying a lot time. of time. So, like I think he rushed for at least hundred yards behind line of scrimmage. Okay. If not more. <laughs> like seriously. Well, Hensley would be perfect, right? Hensley and Dom would be a great rush rush <laughs> to quarterback combination. But Hensley wasn't there, right? Yeah, Hensley was not there. That's a big loss. Um, so yeah, but the big storyline of this game is Dave getting injured earlier in the day when yeah. he was playing with nice TDs. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very unfortunate. We hope you're doing well. Yeah. Um, yeah. It looks like Dave's going to miss a few weeks at uh, least. I just showed you my bed bath, uh, my bed, <laughs> <laughs> my bath chair yes. that I'm going to need after my operation to take baths. Uh, I think Dave might need one too. Yeah, uh, no, so you're going <laughs> to hand it over to him after uh, yeah, a week. Yeah, His ankle literally looked like he had a tennis ball in it. Like, Shoot. it was huge. Swollen. But he was still cracking jokes. Uh, of course. Yeah, he's safe. like, I'll drive with my two feet, like uh, <laughs> my manual car. And he stayed a bit, right, to watch some of the game, which was pretty good. Yeah, guys right. tried to carry him, but they apparently it didn't work out. So he had to okay. sit down and uh, wait. Okay. Um, but yeah, D- Dylan took over for this game. He he threw three interceptions, like a little bit, of, like a lot, but uh, even though this game ended by two scores, like 18 were always in it. Like 18 okay. scored right off the bat took an 8 nothing lead and um, the score was 25-21 at half for Gold Cook mm-hmm. uh, Gold Cook getting the ball back in the second half and, and scoring take a 10 point lead but like 18 were always clawing back 18, right. and then at one point when it was 31-27 mm-hmm. 18 had the ball 18 oh, had the ball late in the game down, down four. 4 points they went turnover on downs with 5 minutes remaining so like okay. they always had a chance they were in this game from beginning to end right, right? like Gold Cook had maybe slightly more control of the game, but they mm-hmm. never took the game away from them. That's a big win for A-team considering you were without your starting quarterback and one of your best receivers well, goes... a loss for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goes receiver, but you're right. Yeah, no, there's totally. no moral victories. 100%. You said it perfectly. And I think that especially um, from a team that just won the championship last year, a lot of question marks here. Yeah. What does A-team do at quarterback? Yeah. Do they stick with Dylan? Do they get somebody maybe from another division? Yeah, do you know what they're doing? I don't. Okay. I, I heard... Potentially get Mike Roy to throw yeah, is what I yeah, heard. That's what my guess would be. I think that'd be a good fit. Obviously, yeah. you no know, Mike Roy is good enough to throw yeah. in Division One. I. I think Dylan is definitely good enough to quarterback this team moving forward. I just yes. think that like it takes out a big weapon at the receiver position. Agreed. And overall, they might be better with another quarterback who's just as good, if not better, than Dylan. I yeah. think overall they'll, they'll be a better team. Yeah. And also, like Dylan's the captain of the defense on this team. It's a lot Being to quarterback. Do both. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot to do both. Um, but credit go clock after we let a fire into their butt they come away <laughs> with two straight victories <laughs> seriously eh? against well, outlaws and a team that's won the championship and there were only six players in this game and Dom played defense oh yeah I, I, yeah I guess uh, I can never give too much praise to Dom he had a crazy interception in this game I think he even got two yeah he had two picks in this game he got one at the end of the game to, to, to uh, seal, seal the game uh, but he had one key pick I think it was like a still one possession game at that point early in the game and uh like, he literally almost lost the receiver when he got that pick. I think he should consider playing defense even when they're, like, 8 or 9. Uh, like, really. Uh, yeah. He should at least rotate I think it's on. more for the fairness of, like, he's always on and off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, true, true. I mean, I don't know. I'm just... You're assuming. Yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, it's crazy that Dom's literally a very good D1 defender. Yeah, I know. Uh, Impressive. Yeah. Good stuff. They're on a roll. They're hot. Let's talk about your idols now. <sighs> wow. What a game. Incredible, incredible game. Uh, we got the dub 40-39 in overtime. I don't even know where to start with this game. Um, well, first, shout out to John. Uh, because John was supposed to quarterback for this game. 
and there was a bit of a mix-up who was going to sub, who wasn't going to sub. We thought Chris wasn't going to play. He ended up playing, which means Marvin would not be allowed to sub, but Marvin already came to sub, so, you know, John was being a gentleman and said, look, I won't throw this game, or else we forfeit. So we said, thank you, John. So Iggy went quarterback for us, and Iggy played as if he was QB1 for us. Uh, he th- Seriously? He, he threw like was a... Was D1 debut? D1, D- yes, it was. He's thrown for, for obviously, Iron Rolls before, uh, but not in D1 and D3. I believe it was his first game in Division 1, and he definitely looked the part. There was a few throws he liked to have back, but two-minute drill, we needed to score. He put the team on his back. He drove the length of the field, scored a touchdown, and got that beautiful two-point convert. Like, there's a lot, a lot to talk about this game. It's hard to, like, kind of resume in a few sentences. Um, before getting to the details, was the bigger win for Iron Rolls or a bigger loss for Centurions? I think it was a bigger win for us. I really do. You look at the you look at the standings, and that's what I was texting the team in our group chat. What a massive game in terms of standings! Because right now we're at two and two. Yeah. Centurions are at one and four, and we're both outside looking in. We don't know yes. if the tie break like yeah, yeah. is that. We don't know if that's updated for us. But the point is like if we lose that game, we're also we, half a game back from second place. Exactly. But if we if, yeah if we lose that game, we go to one and three. Centurions go to two and three, and they have the tie break. So game was massive. Um, well, I guess I, it was a trick question because it was just as big of a loss for them than it was for a win for But the thing because- is, I think because they're going to get their full team eventually back, hopefully, fingers crossed. That's why I would say it was a bigger yeah, win for us. Yeah, things to look forward in the next five exactly. games. I'm not too, too worried about this squad. Uh, they do have to start getting in their winning ways. But, yeah, this game was incredible. So they were scoring almost at will. Um, Simone Pierre having a huge game. Eight receptions, 90 yards, four touchdowns. Yes, fantastic wow. game. Um, Looks like he distributed the ball a little more. Uh, Stanley leading the way in terms of yards, 59 yards. I yeah. guess he caught a long bomber too. He, he did, and it was like drags where he just took up the field. Oh, okay. Like he got like three of his four passes on one drive. Like that was his drive by himself. Yeah. Um, he did a good Chris drive. Chris and you getting seven catches. Yeah. Uh, Marvin getting three touchdowns. All three of his catches going for touchdowns. Touchdowns. And getting a one point and a two the point. The two point conversion. Last play, what happened was Centurion scored the one point convert. Well, we, we scored to get a touchdown. Okay. Then we got the one point convert last play of the game. Why, what was the decision not to go for two there? Uh, like taking your own hands, not going overtime. You tried to avoid at overtime, that right? Point, yeah, I think that. Did you guys discuss it or was it for sure going for one? No, we discussed it. And I think that like Chris was on the bench at the time. He said, no, guys, just go for one. Like Iggy goes for one most of the time in his offense? That's what he's more used to? Honestly, no. Like, he goes for two quite a bit. I think like at that point, it was more of like the gut feeling. Going for one, continuing the game, make you go to OT. We got the one. They convert on the one-point convert. And at that point, we're like, look, these guys are really hard to stop on the one-point conversions. You don't want to stay there all night, right? Exactly. Yeah. Let's go for two, taking our own hands. John wanted to pick up that field? 100%. He yeah. asked me to help him, which I did. And Iggy throws a dart in double coverage to Marvin. Marvin makes a great catch. Uh, we win the game. That's funny. It's like different to Kevin. You go to help Kevin. He's like, no, I don't want your help. Yeah, I want <laughs> Exactly. But uh, crazy, crazy game. A lot of great plays made in this game by both teams. It was fun. Great. Yep. So, Division 2 now? Let's go D2. A lot of good stuff happening in D2. Yep. Um, Jagerball Marvels. I ref that game. Tell me about it, because I was surprised. Not only did I think Marvels were going to win, okay, so I thought it was going to be a close game. It took uh, four, eight, nine. It took 10 plays for us to get our first completion in this game. Come on, Terry. We're talking about the offenses in this division and all that. Uh, each team went four and out, or well, three and out, three incompletions punt, three incompletions punt. They punted? Yeah. Well, it was fourth and 10 from their own five, both of them. Okay. And then we finally got a completion. Um... And that drive was all Felix. Felix uh, Fontaine Larouche, he caught a 35 yard p- bomb. Yeah. And then he caught a 10 yard pass for the touchdown. touchdown. Um, he had a game. He had himself a game. Jagerbaum took a 20 to 6 lead, but I felt that the game was a lot closer than, than it seemed because, like, as much as they seemed to have dominated, they really like, came out in the second half. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were very off. Like, just, just to see, like, Simon started 0 for 7. Yeah. He, had, he, took his eight, he only completed his eighth pass, right? Credit to Marvel's defense, or was it a bit of sloppy offense? I'd say a bit of both. Okay. I'd say maybe a little bit more sloppy offense. Okay. Um, like, he was really off. Like Yeah. But he ended the game 21 for 31, 281 yards, seven touchdowns, and zero interceptions. That sounds like a good game. So, like, it sounds like a great game. Like, yeah. maybe one of his best games. Ten yeah. completions, almost 300 yards, seven touchdowns, no picks. Like, this team does not make a lot of mistakes, right? Right. And if you make mistakes, like Max threw three picks in this game. If, well, one of them was at a Hail Mary at the end of the first half. Okay. Uh, if you make mistakes in this game, it's, it's going to be hard to come up with the win, right? For sure. And it's crazy because I think everyone picked Marvels, myself included. Yeah. Uh, coming off that huge game, uh, losing in overtime against Thunder Buddies, yeah, 48, a fun game. 48-47. Uh, you think they had the firepower to like score on every drive, right? Yes. Um, I have a couple of notes here. 
Uh, I have a question before you get to your yeah, notes. Where do Marvels go from here? Because they had lost three yeah. games by a very close margin. This one not so close. They're yeah. sitting at one and four now. And coming into the season, this is a team that you would think could even be like number one throughout the power rankings. Well, look, they have a huge game next week against Litanos. Huge game because they're both the two spots right outside of the playoffs looking in, right? Yeah. And that game is massive for them. Like that game, if they even if they win that game, they're still half a game back on on the Tanant because they'll right. be two and four. Tanant will be two and three. Uh, yeah. But if Marvels lose that game at one and five, when every team has at least a win or two more than you, yeah, and you already have five losses, I bet you could finish five hundred. I don't think they're making the playoffs. If they lose that game. I think their season a must win situation yeah, I for think Marvels this weekend. Very early on, week six, I think that game is a must win for them. Uh, yeah, and if they don't win it, I think their playoff hopes are like. Like, I'd be shocked if they make it after that. Even if they yeah. put a string of four straight wins, right. it's going to be very, very difficult. With how good Division 2 is, it's hard to argue that. Yeah. So, can I get back to what I was saying? Sure. Okay, got to give my rusher some love, okay? Uh, we'll start off with Jagger Bombs. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeremy Lavoie Patry, JLP. Okay, let's call him. Uh, he didn't get a sack in this game. Okay. okay. And remember how I always talk about the stats for rushers? Does yeah. it mean you're not a good rusher if you're not averaging a certain amount of sacks per game? Yeah. He got a couple of tips. And one of his tips led to an interception. Max's first interception, yeah. he tipped it up in the air for Loic, who okay. had a crazy game defensively. Loic, I think, had at least three or four PDs on key third or fourth downs. Coming into the last up, getting a fingertip on it. Yeah. Uh, played great defense. He's Loic. a great defender. Yeah, he's a great defender. Mm-hmm. And he loves to play defense. Like, you know, some guys, like, like he also really loves to play offense also. Yeah. But I think, like, he gets hyped up to play defense and make those big plays. Not everyone does. But on that play, Jay tipped it up in the air. Yeah. And Loic... Uh, got the pick, mm-hmm. put Jagerbaum in great field possession, but he doesn't get a single stat on that. Right. Right? Right. He doesn't get the PD because no, the play, it was caught. It was caught so yeah. uh, that just goes to show the importance of a rusher. Mm-hmm. Huge. Huge, huge. Uh, Good call. Tyler getting yeah. two sacks in this game, mm-hmm. leading all of Division 2 with uh, 12 sacks in five games. Having 2.4 sacks a game. That's very like, impressive. We knew he was a great D4, D5 rusher. He, I don't think he had played... Higher than Division Three, mm-hmm, right? And now he's stepping up in Division Two, and I yeah. think he has double the number of sacks at the second. Uh, the guy sack, in second, and he sack leader has. Yeah, he wanted to test out the waters. Like he wanted to try and put it like, kind of for it to be like a goal for him to play in Division he Two. Actually no, he actually has a seven sack lead right now over the second guy. Do we know the record for sacks in a season? MFL doesn't do that, eh? Yeah, it was there, but the record site is a little down right now. I mean, if he's averaging two point four, that has to be fair, like twenty four sacks in a season. Yeah, it was in the mid twenties, I believe. Like that's, you know, yeah. maybe like on the verge of, especially in Division Two, right? Yeah. Um, there was a drive where he literally, uh, I think the only drive where Agram didn't score on. Yeah. I think it was to end the first half. Let me just get. This. What do you make of that, Terry? He's leading the league in Division Two by a by a mile in sacks, but the team is one and four. I'll answer that question in a sec. Okay. So to end the first half, uh, yeah, literally after that interception that where JLP tipped it off and looked at the interception, mm-hmm. Yagram were in the red zone. They were okay. in an end goal situation, yeah. up, up eight points right before half. Yeah. Um, first down, Small gets sacked for minus four. Okay. Small comes his five yard pass, Small gets sacked for minus four, incomplete turnover on downs. Mm-hmm. He literally held his defense. On, on his own. On his own. Like, yeah. they put them on his back and yeah. said, yeah, Grom's not scoring on this drive. Yeah. And Small is a hard quarterback to sack. Yeah, he is. He gets uh, rid of the ball quickly, is shifty. He goes through his reads fast, and, yeah. like, he doesn't he doesn't try to beat the rusher or, no. like, roll out and stuff. Yeah. Um, it was literally, he had gotten sacked zero times before this game. Really? His only two sacks came in this wow. week against Marvel. So, I can make the argument right now that Tyler is maybe the best rusher in all of MFL every division as right now. The way he's playing, and he, I think, in the spring, he played the. 3 4 or 4 5. Yeah. And he had four. close to, if not at least 20 sacks in each of his, on each of his teams. I think he had like 19 and 21 or something like that. Talk about consistency. Seriously. Right. It's not like he's ever one, like one season with six, another season with season like 20. That's good. When I played against, when I played against uh, Mustard Tiger, and I was all subbing for evidence. He sacked me, I think it was three or four times, and he sacked me on the convert. Yeah. Uh, not a guy that misses sacks. Yeah. And uh, how does it not translate? Like, how could Marvels be a bad team right now and have. Such a good rusher. Is that like them giving up deep balls? Like, is it second and 16? Yeah, because I'm saying like, a sack's not like an interception, right? It puts no. the offense in a bad situation, but it doesn't take the possession No, away. it definitely doesn't. So you can sack a quarterback on every first down, he could still complete get the first For sure. down. So uh, I think it's that. Like, I don't think, like Tyler's a huge bright spot on this Marvel's defense. Yeah. But I don't think 
the Marvels have a top three defense in this division right now. I don't think they had it. They've had one for a while, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think when they win games, it's because of their offense. Yeah. Because Max plays a near perfect game. Like right. Max throws a couple of interceptions. It's tough to win that game. That defense probably not going to bail him out. Yeah. Which in flag football is normal. Yeah, of course. It's like flag football is a ask a uh, Steve's division two outlaws teams, right? Like who? <laughs> yeah, Steve. Uh, Steve lets us know about that one. But yeah, no, totally. It's not. Uh, it's not a sport where you rely on your defense to win games. Yeah. Um, it's enough for that game. Agreed. Uh, Thunder Buddies, Nice Cities. Yes. Very close game, especially considering the fact that like Dave came, like got injured on the first drive in this game. Yeah. Chris filled in. Um, uh, Thunder Buddies winning by two points. So I spoke to Kareem after it because I wasn't there, and he says Thunder Buddies controlled this game from start to finish, and then late in the second half, it was like, oh boys, like what are we doing? Credit Nice Cities. They almost came back to win the game because they were down by two possessions in the second half. Scored to make it a two-point game and then had an unsuccessful conversion at the end. Uh, tight game, but yeah, Thunder Buddy's just squeaking away with the, the two-point victory. Uh, Cream has a pick six in the stats, but no interception. That is a little bit strange. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's humanly possible, but Cream definitely did get a pick mm-hmm. six in this game. He did? I think so. Can you let me know if I'm right or wrong? I don't think so, because Chris threw two picks, Dave threw one. Yeah. Manu had two picks, Rory had one. Hmm. Anyway, I'll look at the play later and I'll let John know. Fair. But yeah, ask uh, ask Kareem. Ask Kareem. Yeah, yeah, definitely will. Uh, Dave balled on this game, five catches for 75 yards. Um, yeah. Did you see any of it? I saw Kareem's sick catch. I think it was a convert. A convert, you were saying. Yeah. It, uh, like, it was like a corner route, back of the end zone, yeah. toe tap, great, like, secure the ball, no ball bobble. Him and Steve get that connection going. Yeah. Steve trusts him. This is two straight losses for Nice Steve after opening up the season 3 and 0, I believe. Again, what does Nice Cities do with the quarterback situation here? Yeah. Does Chris go QB full time? I and mean, uh, Chris has been the quarterback of Nice Cities, <laughs> right? In like in previous years, and he's been like the heart and soul of the mm-hmm. team. Do they decide to go that route? Yeah. And if so, do they get a receiver to kind of replace Chris? Oh man, that's tough. Injuries suck. I mean, the football injuries suck. Flag football injuries suck. But you talk about let's say you put Chris the receiver, Chris at the quarterback like spot, right? You still yeah. have Laurent receiver. You have Marvin as a receiver. Yeah. Um, Thomas. Thomas is a receiver. You got Nico. Uh, you got Brian. Um, Brian. And I know the guy that's been playing them for a while with the Rangers jersey. His name's slipping my mind. But they still have good receiving core. Rangers jersey. Yeah. He wears a. He wore a Rangers jersey once, unless he was just playing with a team. No, yeah, he wore a Rangers jersey. Like a New York Rangers. Yeah, New York Rangers. Okay. That no, wasn't the Texas Rangers. But he's a longtime Lake City player. I think so. He's tall. Okay. You've seen him in season past. No, no, I haven't. No, but he's a good receiver. I know you that. You said he's been playing for them for a long time. No, no, I said like he's he's on their like roster this year. I said Chris has been playing with them for a long time. No, you said they also have a guy with the Rangers that, that's been playing with them for a long time. I don't think I said that, but if I did, I didn't mean that. I meant like he's a good player and a solid guy for the squad. Pretty sure you meant he said that. Oh. Anyway, uh, the other D2 game, Spurs yeah. gang, uh, Red Raiders. Surprising to see that, I mean, props, both quarterback combined for zero interceptions this game. Respect. Like, it looked like they each had a clean game. Mm-hmm. I didn't see any of this game at all. I didn't. I wonder with putting up 26 points if Spritz Gang didn't punt. Uh, let me see. I could definitely check the play-by-play. Play. Uh, their first drive, they resulted in a safety. Their second drive, they scored. Third drive, they scored. Fourth drive, they scored. And then the end of the game by uh, not converting. Um, so they did not punt once in this game. Either way, good stuff playing against a good Red Raiders team. And, you know, just having one of the games that we know we can have. Like you said, four TDs, no picks. Um, and um, They did not have a fourth down in this game either. So really? They never were in a situation where they could have punted. You see, they didn't want to be <laughs> tested. I like it. Uh, P.O., sure-handed receiver, seven catches, 48 yards. Um, my boy Sapliski seems to be everywhere, 5, 46, <laughs> two TDs. I actually think he's on this roster, though, <laughs> full-time now. Um so good stuff. Obviously, it wasn't a win for them. There's no moral victories, but like I yeah. think this team is getting closer. And Red Raiders with the big dub. Yep. In a competitive division. So Division 3 now? Yep. Uh, I ref the Double Dippers Invictus G game. Okay. Uh, Guillaume Dagger was the quarterback for this given week. Yes. Uh, I don't think he's their full-time quarterback. I don't okay. know if they have a full-time quarterback. I think they're going QB roulette. Oh, boy. Um, that well, is not a uh, <laughs> recipe for success. Uh, our boy Leon balled out in this game. 19 for 35, 191 yards, six touchdowns, no picks. Uh, Marco Gavita, every catch he makes seems to be like, uh, like a highlight reel catch, right? Like, <laughs> yes. He doesn't make like a, a normal hook no, no, catch. No. Like, every catch, like a sideline, one hand, burning the receiver. Acrobat. Yeah. Um, Guillaume, 
struggled with the four interceptions, threw a pick on his first like attempt, mm-hmm. so that doesn't help. But he showed a lot of good in this, like a lot of good plays also in this game. Like when you look at his his stats, he had the same completion percentage and the same amount of yards as Leon. Mm. He just had a few less touchdowns and a lot more interceptions. Yeah. But he was moving the ball. Okay. Like, for a guy that hadn't played quarterback in I don't know how long, obviously, Dagger's an athlete, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, he didn't run as much as I thought he would I was run. just going to say, yeah. like, he could trust himself to run, right? He's yeah, but small, I think he shifty. just wanted to, like, throw the ball and for sure. actually play quarterback. I get that. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? I was a little bit... Because I, I picked Invictus G to win this game. But that's thing with, like, double dippers. I feel like I have one take on them, and it's... They're hot and cold. And I yeah, think every hot. week and every two weeks, they prove me yeah. right. They're hot and cold. Nico balled down in this game, getting 10 tackles, uh, two interceptions. He Tackle had a sick team. interception. Um, as much as the game didn't seem close, Invictus was always fighting back. Like, mm. Sorry, they were not giving up, like, at all. And mm-hmm. the... the um, uh, Double Dippers had an eight point lead going to halftime. Double Dippers start, uh, sorry, Double Dippers had an eight point lead going to halftime. Yeah. And Victors get the ball start the second half, they score. Make it a two point game. They right. get the convert. Okay. Uh, Double Dippers score, get the touchdown. And Victors scores right after. Like, four, with 14 minutes left in this game, it was a three point game. Right? And that yeah. three points were just converts. Right. And then uh, Leon scored two touchdowns to kind of like ice the game. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Double Dippers are a strong D3 team. And Victors are, are going to be a good team. They have a lot of talent on this team, right? Yes. I think with Double Dippers, it's going to be... Sorry, with Invictus. They're also missing, like, their stud, Louis Matsir, in this game. That's a two-point conversion. Yeah. That's... Well, obviously, it's a huge loss. But my suggestion would be don't do QB roulette. Stick with a quarterback. It's just tough to do QB roulette. To switch guys, you can't use the, the hot hand, the cold hand. Stick to a QB. Invest in him. Let him play the whole season. Whether you guys make the playoffs or don't, I think it's going to be, like, a good recipe for success. And it allows your quarterback to kind of... Game momentum with your receivers allows your quarterback to get better. Of course, mistakes are going to be made. Yeah. And I think that if they stick with Dagger as being starting quarterback throughout the season, I think they're still a good enough team to make the playoffs. Yeah. I didn't see any of the other two games. So instead of talking about that, unless you want to say something about those two games, I was going to talk about like the division as a whole. Sure. I just want to say quickly... Um, Ross Hoss did not let you down this week. They didn't. And Ludovic texted me and says, I got you. And I was like, my man. <laughs> but a really good game. Uh, but Ben... Impressive, impressive win, putting up 49 points. That's going to be a good matchup next week. The raw sauce against the bins. Oh, yeah. True, eh? Those saucy bins. Oof, there you go. <laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah, Chiefs didn't play this past weekend. No, we did not. But they're the only undefeated team. And given that they have less games played, they're in third place right now, right? Yep. Uh, which team do you fear more right now, Bin or Idaho? Assuming question. Idaho are full strength and Brady's throwing. It's tight, but I'm just gonna I'm going to go with Idaho. I think the fact that this team can score at will. Ben has showed they can score, put up points. But I think if you're asking me who which team could put up more points consistently, I'm going to go with Brady on that offense. Yeah. Just because that the with Brady at quarterback, with the receivers they have. Although Ben have a heck of a team too. And that's why I mentioned on the podcast like a few seasons ago that this is a team we may not be talking a lot yeah, about yeah, yeah. or enough about. So it, it's tough. But I'm going to say... The one I'm fearing more is probably Idaho. Look at the standings. I'm shocked to see that Double Dippers are two and three. Yeah. But their three losses are against Ben, Idaho, and Master Chiefs, the three teams that are ahead of them in the standings, right? Yeah. Uh, they're going to have to be able to beat one of those teams, obviously, going forward, right? And if they want to make a deep playoff run. Who would you say is a dark horse here in the division? I know it's that's kind of a vague-ish answer. Yeah, like, what, like at what point does the team not have to be good to be considered a dark horse? Yeah. Because like, I could easily say Double Dippers. Like I think Double Dippers have the... If Double Dippers are your D3 champions, you wouldn't be shocked. No. Um, are are they like could that be considered a dark horse? I I could see we haven't seen Panache pull up a string of victories in a long time, but right. I I could see them finishing top three by the end of the season. Also, yeah. right? Yeah, they're only one and two right now. They played a lot less games. Mm-hmm. They're one and two with a plus seven differential, right? Yeah, totally. Um, and a big win by them uh, not last week but the week before. Yeah, you know, by this past week. Yeah. Six and six of the eight Do you made have the playoffs. A dark, dark horse. Uh yeah, for me the dark horse would be Ross Sauce. <laughs> would you be shocked if they get a sec- if they don't get a second victory? No. <laughs> okay. But I wouldn't be shocked if they finish. I wouldn't be shocked if they even won the championship. Okay. I'd be this serious about that. Um, Division Four. I, I didn't mean, see many games here. Um, one thing I did see is Mustard Tigers Airborne. Uh, David Brisson. You know he he like really improves the quarterback. Yes. He's been throwing him a couple of flowers. In this yes. game, Brian Mustard literally was throwing the ball away, like literally to the ground 
at the feet of David Brisson, and he literally caught the ball, both hands secured it before the ball even touched the ground. Like, I, I, he was not aiming. Like, that was not the ball. It was not <laughs> going to throw away. Caught. Yeah, and I just, like, I think I turned around for a second. It was my halftime. I don't know. I was walking, and I just, I saw that play, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> like, he's got hands, you know? He could do it all. Um, also, a quick player, too. Quick player, smart player. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I really didn't see any of the, any games. But that Pockets before. Rockets Airborne Terry thirty one thirty. Rockets were game. huge in this game. I picked Airborne in the upset. Somebody, you know, you got to kind of go with uh, go with the upset there. I did. Didn't work out. But Baby Maynard having a massive game in this one, Terry, so in the loss. Pocket Rockets were up nineteen with eleven and a half minutes to go. Okay. Um, Airborne scoring. S- Six, five touchdowns this game, getting no converts. All they needed was one convert. Yeah. Any point in this game at least goes to overtime. Yeah. The importance of converts. It's so like, true. Don't, don't use them as like free plays to practice no, stuff no, no. or like throw it to the receiver that gets no balls. Like, get your converts in. Like, use your your money plays. Use your bread and butter plays. It's five yards. You gotta get those converts. This game. Everyone get two one point converts. Get one two point convert. They win the game. This could be completely irrelevant and out of left field. From all of MFL D one to D five. We're talking one and two point conference, just in general. Let's yeah. bunch them together. How successful in terms of percentage do you think teams are at conversions? Below fifty for sure. Agreed. If you had to put a number, I'd say roughly around twenty five percent. I'd say if you're converting on over thirty percent, you're good. I'd say thirty nine percent, but maybe that's a little high. I think that's very high. Yeah, because that's like two converts out of five. It also depends if you go for one or two. I'm mean, yeah, just saying converting on yeah, in general. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. I, I don't see you. May be right, but it's like. It's pretty surprising because, like, you need five yards. Yeah. But also, it's tough because you need the right play. Like, the end zone is small. Right? The end zone, we don't have a freaking yeah. CFL end zone where it's 20 yards. You can throw to freaking uh, Andrew Grant in the back of the end zone. There's enough room, right? It's tough because you have to be smart with, you have to, like, be smart with your play calls. Because yeah. you have to scheme guys well, the open. The end zone doesn't have to be that big for Andrew Grant to have room in it, you know? What? The end zone could be a phone booth and Andrew Grant has room Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> Touche. That's actually a pretty good one. Um, but, yeah, like, um, conversions aren't easy. No. And we see this, like, consistently. Mm hmm. Like, for a team that's putting up 30 points and not getting one conversion. Yeah. And Baby Menard, um, yeah, 13 catches, 89 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, Ryan was quarterback in this game. I think he had a deal with Ben. If, uh, you're not going, if I'm not going QB, you better throw me the ball, bro. <laughs> uh, McSweeney uh, getting two interceptions in this game. Yeah, huge. Because I think uh, not only did Airborne clutch up at the end mm-hmm. on offense, the last two drives of Pocket Rockets ended up in interceptions. Both by uh, Big. Ryan, oh no, one by Ryan and the other one by Gregory Spino, so that was huge. Yeah, and um, Airborne still without a win, I think, in uh, D four right now, going from oh, first five. place to maybe last, right? That's surprising, um, because you wouldn't say they really have a downgrade at quarterback. No, and the division got a, maybe stronger. Yeah. I, I think it's got to be that because I think this team is more athletic with the addition of Ryan than they were last year, so it's yeah. a little bit surprising. Well, look, um, you got one, two, three, four, five teams at two and two right now, right? Yeah. But 0 and 5, it's going to be tough. For me, one of the story, agreed. For me, one of the storylines in D4 is what's happening with Cyclones. I was going to say, why aren't Mustard Tigers running away with it? How are Mustard Tigers 2 and 2? I they think, made it to the finals last year, right? Yeah, I think with Mustard Tigers, they're a very smart team. They're a solid bunch. They may be missing a little bit of athleticism and speed. But you don't need that in D4. Well, if other teams have it, maybe you do. Usually, your smart veteran yeah, should. Yeah, I, I agree. Better. I agree. I just like I, I see the games that they lost. They they were all matched athletically. Yeah, I, I'm not that shocked with Cyclones. Don't forget, this was a Division Five team, right? Yeah. A lot of these players came into the league, and like some of them it was a free agent team coming in uh, in the spring, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Nick had a great season. He's still having a good season, right? Over a thousand yards in five games, so averaging over 200 yards a game. Yeah. Twenty touchdowns, nine interceptions. That's an over two to one TD to interception ratio, which is great. Right. They did lose Lazar. They got Alex, but he's missing like another Alex to be Lazar's height. But Lazar wasn't there in their playoff run last year. He was there in the finals. In the, in the championship finals. game, you're right, you're right. But I believe there was a game that they won where he wasn't there. Like, they, they were able he to... He wasn't there for their playoff run. Sorry, my bad, my, no, sorry, my bad. He was there for the playoff run, but he was not there for a string of games like leading up to the playoffs. And, like, they games. did a fairly good job in those yeah, games. Yeah, but that was Division 5 also. That's true. Now they're in Division 4. I just think, like, Bigger look... boys and girls. Terry, touche. When you have... You know, Eric Amir is a guy like yeah. who's, who's like a stud from years past. When you got Jaden, the guy that we don't talk about really, we got you got Biddle, who's a smart player. You got Sip the Blisky. Yeah. Like this is a good. You got Barber too. Like this, I don't know. Like yeah. so you can tell me the division is better than D five. You can tell me this, tell me that. 
I'm a little bit disappointed in Cyclones, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, well, look, Bin and Utah seem to be the better teams in Division 4. Those are their two recent losses. Yeah. They beat Drama Club Airborne. They lost a close one to Randoms. Um, I, th- like, to me, it, we didn't do, like, preseason record and all that, but I, I would have had this team around 500. Yeah, I, I, I probably would have had them better. I think it's just the way they lose, Terry. They lost in Week 4 by 28. They lose this past week by yeah. 25. Yeah, but like when you don't have that safety who's like eight feet tall. No, but but not everyone. You don't need an eight foot. Like okay, Lazar is a great player. He's too good for Division yes. Four and Five. But you don't need. But maybe an they foot. relied on him so much, and that now they're lost out of the lot. Yeah, I get it. But this team is too smart to be losing games even without him. And you don't need a bunch of speed or an eight yeah. foot tall safety to be winning games. Ask us what to do on defense. You get stops and not give up fifty points. Here's the ultimate <laughs> rusher. Um. Anything else before? Good win by Randoms. Yeah. With uh, Yannick filling in for small quarterback in this one. Hey, there you go. Yannick did get a W. No. Oh, Yannick got, oh shoot, got the loss. Yeah. Shoot. Well, Yannick has a championship, so he's all good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so D5? D5. Do I got any notes for D5? Oh yeah, I watched the uh, Misfits uh, Sour Peeps game. Was that a? Uh... Yeah, it was a forfeit because uh, Misfits busted the cap. Uh, they got a couple of subs, last minute subs in. Did they, they know before the game they were gonna bust the cap? I don't think so. Like it looked pretty obvious based on the guys they had, considering it was D five. That's tough. But uh, yeah. And listening is a smart guy. I'm surprised. Yeah, I think it was like last minute someone bailed. They got another guy. I, I don't know exactly the details, but yeah. I agree. Lesnar like, is a smart guy. I agree. I was also surprised. Um, so it's in small filled in for Lesniak in this game. Great quarterback. I don't know if you remember him from Washington Foreskins. I believe who that's who he had played for. Oh, tall guy. Uh, tallish. Yes, they would go. You gave him a Gatorade or something once. No, that was their other quarterback. Ah, I, I don't shoot. believe he was their full time quarterback. Okay, he had no. quarterback me a couple of games, okay, but okay. he did play on that team. Okay, okay. Yeah, I should have asked him where is that team and when are they going to come back. Um, yeah. Small bold one balled out for them as a receiver. He's the he was the bin quarterback on their championship undefeated run. When they beat Kevin in the finals that year, yes, he's on the bin roster now, I think, but isn't he's not always there? Okay, eight catches, seventy three yards, two touchdowns. Um, it was another rough game for Sour Preeps, but there were a lot of there was a lot of promise, right? Like, mm-hmm. Jocelyn Wallet is gonna obviously get better this season, right? He's mm-hmm. a smart player. I, I think he's a defensive guy, right? Like, I freaking love him. <laughs> Something about him. The, the great guy. Like, it's yeah, a great yeah. team, right? Like, yeah. you want to root for them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, only nine completions, 45 yards, a touchdown, four picks. But, like, there were a lot of plays where he was missing his guy by, like, this much. Like, there was okay. a lot of plays where, like, he called the, a good play. Yeah. He got the guy open. He made the great read. Like, if a quarterback's not reading the field properly... No matter how good his arm no is. No matter how good his arm is, no matter how accurate he is, I feel it's harder for that quarterback to develop into a... Better quarterbacks. So you think becoming more accurate, becoming more easier. accurate, and throwing that ball when your player is wide open is a lot easier if mm-hmm. you're making the right read. Okay. And there were times his targeted receiver was the was the good read. Yeah. Okay. And in this game, I think it was more on him than his receiver, but yeah. sometimes on the receiver too. He he threw a, a gorgeous deep ball. Like one for a 45 bomb mm-hmm. that waterfall right through his receiver's arms. Shoot. Like that right there would have doubled his yards, right, and doubled his touchdowns. So like. I like the fact that he's still taking shots downfield. I like For the sure, fact that he that. punted a little less in this game. I love the enthusiasm of this team. And, like, they're, they're in Division 5. They're there to have fun. They're having fun. And they're just going to get better. And don't forget, Misfits had a great team that came to this oh, week. Oh, yeah. So, but, no, but even this if... This is a D4 team. Yes, even if they they had the D5 roster and they didn't break the cap, they still have a very good team. Yeah. Like, Misfits have a uh, gold egg or Zach that has, like, eight picks in three games. Right? Like, this this is still a tough defense to, like, to base a quarterback season off of. Yeah. Um... But I agree with your take. Yeah. Just yeah, being Chaz smart. 11 picks in five games now. <laughs> Over to a game. Yeah. Um, and Sour Peeps will be playing no one next week as they have a bye. Yeah. And then they're going to come back against TD Hunters. Mm. Who they already played? Um, no. No, they haven't. No, no. Who did TD Hunters play that game that I refed them? Last Calls? No, no, not this past week. The other game that I had refed. I think it was Misfits. Yeah, so... Um. Yeah. Uh, Vol- Sorry, I'm looking at the. Yeah, go ahead. Are vultures the team to beat in Division Five? Most definitely. Uh, uh, sorry. Well, there's the fighting armadillos, but I, I, I think I give the edge to vultures right now. Why? Just because of the experience on that team, and like, they have a great group of athletes, mm-hmm. and well, they're both they're, they both have one loss. They both have yes. plus eighty differential. 
Um, you know what's funny? What? They play each other this week. That's great. Uh, Vultures four straight wins. Their only loss came in week one against uh, TD Hunters. Um, and let's see, fighting armadillos. Okay, you know what? I asked the question. They both lost in week one. They both are on a huge one. One team I won four straight game. One won five straight games. Like I said, Vultures very easily, but I wouldn't be shocked if it go the other way. Like Pio is too strong to quarterback in this division. He is. Um, this is gonna be a fun game. Terry, you look at interceptions for Vultures. This this is players, okay? One pick, three picks, two picks, five picks, one pick, two pick, one pick. So it's not one defensive player that's like no. rolling out. It's like everyone's doing their job. Right? Yes, which is very impressive. And then you have fighting armadillos, where Pio at times does throw picks, but it's because he's a risk taker and yeah. like I think his style, like I approve of his style. Yeah. Like he's not the reason he's throwing picks is because he doesn't re- like he's not. Relying on five-yard hooks. Didn't, like, Justin Herbert lead the league in interceptions last year with, like, 17? Or, no, sorry, Matt Stafford? When he won the Super Stafford Bowl. Stafford won the Super Bowl, and he averaged a pick a game, right? Right, But exactly. he also threw for, like, a bunch of yards, a bunch of touchdowns, right? So, like, it's, it's risk-reward, like you said it. Like, compared to Vultures, who Philip Roberts at the quarterback position only threw two interceptions thus far, right? Doesn't He's not averaging many yards a game. He's not he's averaging just below four touchdowns a game, but he only threw two picks, so he's protecting the football. There you go. Um... I'm not. I'm not just playing devil, devil's advocate here. I think the fighting armadillos. We're allowed to agree. Yeah, we are allowed to agree, but I'm not gonna. Hey man, it's close. I like both these teams. Both a good group of guys. Um, I'm gonna go with fighting armadillos, just because I feel like Pio is on a roll now in yeah. general. Um, with you know he plays on three teams now. One of them he doesn't quarterback, but the two teams he's quarterback. He's playing really well. I'm super super excited to see this game. Yeah. Excited, uh, upset I'm gonna miss this weekend, but I I think it's a coin toss between fighting armadillos and, we both and vultures. Be there this weekend. You're not gonna be there this weekend. Well, I don't think I'll be able to watch. Oh, true, true, true. Okay, that's you get you get a pass on that one. But fighting armadillos, vultures. Who's ever refereeing that game? Come back to me because I want to know how that game yeah. goes. Oh, I'm gonna give the I, the edge to fighting armadillos just by a little bit, but I think that this could be a finals preview. Yeah, most definitely. Is there any other team? I, I think right now, if I, it'd be my finals preview. Yes, like the the I would say realistically, the oh. only other team I could see giving them a run for the money, both these teams, is Misfits. And I think Phoenix could Phoenix, turn it around. Yes, if they put Nick at the quarterback position, right? I know, eh? <laughs> Apparently, there's a uh, controversy there. Um, wait, what was the, the Fighting Armadillos team name last season? With the, well, they weren't Fighting Armadillos, but they had like the same triangle logo. Uh, nice triangles. Nice triangles. Didn't we also say that they should be one of the better teams early on in the season and then they kind of like didn't make the finals last year? Uh, yes, but I don't think this is the same team. Yeah, maybe just a couple of guys, but like they finished 8-2 and two last year. Yes. They were like, they were a That's... lot of wins to a little bit of losses. Right. Uh... Well, the, the playoffs is a whole different story. You're right, Terry. Like playoffs is completely, completely different. And I think that like both these teams, Armadillos, Vultures, are just, you know, kind of learning the game and... Come playoff time, they're gonna be able to turn it up. But yeah, I look for uh, for Misfits and or Phoenix. Like it's funny we're not even talking. We didn't talk about Phoenix that much, right? Like this yeah, is a little disappointing. Both their both their teams, eh? Yeah, I think two and two and two and three. Yeah, you'd think Kevin would have a stranglehold in the division four and five by now, right? Hundred percent. Yeah, like, you think that'd be his division? Like he'd be racking up them uh, awards, trophies. championships. Is yeah. the four, diff five getting better? Maybe when you said it, yeah, said his his plateau would be a division three quarterback. Yes. Yeah, not looking so uh, yeah. wrong right now, eh? And I felt bad saying that. He's only getting older. And worse. Time for Nikki to take over. Nikki, Nikki, little Nikki. What were you going to ask, sorry? I completely forget when you okay. cut me off. So you go to Brossard? Oh, is, are Diff 4 and Diff 5 getting better? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. So. Especially in the fall, because like, in the spring, I think it's where we have the most new teams. Like, mm-hmm. uh, well, yeah, the free agent teams, I think we had like six D4, five free agent team combined. Right. Whereas now we had one. So yeah. those free agents are kind of making their own teams afterwards. True. S- remaining with the same team. True. Because we have like all winter to find those new pl- free agent players. Yeah. And then uh, you've already played in the spring. So everyone that's new to football kind of joins in the spring. Uh, you become better, obviously, after having played 10 games against having played zero. Mm-hmm. And then obviously, I think the D5 of the fall is like slightly better than the D5 of the, of the spring. Right. In terms of talent. And right. like any new player right now has a lot more experience, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty good take. You agree? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Why unfortunately? I don't always like agreeing with you. It's good to agree sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, pick one game in MFL Brassard. To recap? Yeah, I say this one. Yeah, it's got to be that. Laog Typhoons, 45-44. Uh, 
Converts are important. Reminds me of a college game. So Guillaume Renault Dumoulin, 24 for 34, 317 yards, 7 tutties, and 0 interceptions. That sounds like a Madden type game. Rob also threw for 300 yards, 7 touchdowns. Unfortunately, got those 2 interceptions, which were maybe the difference in this game. Oh, I don't know at what point in the game they came. Yeah. Um, Guillaume getting one of those interceptions himself. Man Ryan no McSweeney, 10 catches, 112 yards, 2 touchdowns, and a 2 point convert. Oh my gosh. Um, Dave St. Jean, 9 catches, 101 yards. A touchdown and a one-point convert. Uh, Frédéric Circe, six catches for 93 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, Alec Richard Nantel, two touchdowns, 82 yards on three catches. Way to be productive, eh? Of, yes, talk about a game of ballers. Yeah, our boy Sean Haney, six for 70 and one. Uh, this wow. is crazy. A lot of offense. Love it. I love it. I love offense. I don't like defense. But good. I didn't think that game was going to be that close, to be honest. So good I didn't think it was too, because are winless. And, yeah. uh, well, I mean, Loud only had one win coming into this game, right? Yeah. That's impressive. Good on Typhoons. Yeah. I, I think for Lau, like, I didn't pick them to win it this year as my number one, but, like, I think they need to win to win it this year. Wow, it's only their second season. Really yeah, I know, but they're, I find them, like, they're they're hungry. They're, in my opinion, the most athletic team, the fastest team. They're smart. Like, it's hard to find a weakness on the squad. It's yeah. hard to find a team that does something better than them well, right KLB now. does a lot of things better than a lot of people. Yes, you, you're right. Like, I think that could be a championship, but I think that why I say is Lyle need to win it is because, like, they're too good mm -hmm. to go back to our seasons without winning. Yeah. I mean, just two seasons, right? Like It is. You're right. No, it's still, it's still early in their NFL career. To make the viewers happy, let's make um, our picks for Bassard as of now so we don't have to we go through it later because we're probably going to forget. We got you. Come on now. Uh, KLB, Buccaneers. Oh, good, two good teams. KLB. Yeah, KLB. Old school 28-3. 28-3. I'm going old school because I don't know if John's going to throw. Why wouldn't he? Didn't he get hurt last time? Or? Uh, Somebody's shoulder was hurting him a little bit. Baby, he's fine. Uh, Congrès, Typhoons? Typhoons. Really? Getting their first win? Yep. Hmm. Had a good game last week. Have an even better game this week. Congrès coming off that win against uh, La Horde. So I'm going to go with Congrès. ID. In a very close, similar close game. Game to what happened? Yeah. Red Knot Skins, La Horde. Horde. Loud also, Buccaneer, Typhoons, in the doubleheader. Buccaneer, too good to go on two. Uh, I agree with that one. I could also say Typhoons are too good to go on two. Yeah. Maybe they're not because they're winless. Yeah, maybe they're not. But they've been in a lot of close games, right? Yep, they definitely, definitely have been. So what do we do after Broussard usually? Our picks for everyone else? We do our picks. Uh, you want to quickly, I'm feeling generous today. Let's, you want to jump in the standings in uh, Broussard? Sure. People are talking about... Um, you, know, you want to also get, get up a little bit so the light doesn't show behind sure. you? No, no. Um, so, we don't know how many teams make the playoffs in Brossard. I'm guessing six. It should be six, yeah. Surprises in Brossard so far. I'll go first. Pleasant surprise. Red Knot Skins at two and one. Yes. I think that, uh, you know, Miles is a smart player, uh, a good receiver. Um, oh, he is not even quarterback in this team. Or is he? That was a Buccaneer. That was a Buccaneer. Down. Never mind. Yes, Miles is quarterbacking Red Knot Skins. And he is a good quarterback, a better receiver. Has 11 touchdowns, 10 picks. Not the prettiest, but still 2 and 1. Yeah. Uh, he has athletes on this team, you know, Greg Browning, uh, Riley. My, my, so, like, hey, it's kind of understandable as why they're 2 and 1. But I think that, um, yeah. you know, obviously, quarterback, most important position. And I think that you see that Miles is getting better, reading the field better. Throws a nice dish ball. Um, so, yeah, I'd say good stuff on Red Knot Skins. 2-1. and one. I say old school being 2-2 two and two is a surprise for me. You thought they'd be better or worse? I think this was clearly my second best team going yeah. this season after okay. KLB. Like, I had... Like, if you would have asked me the preseason championship preview, it would have yeah. been KLB old school. Good pick. Um, yeah. Alrighty, that's enough of that. Yeah. Well, they also played KLB twice and they split against them, so... That's impressive. Yeah. Lost La Horde. Can we make our picks? Let's go. We start with D1 or D5? We start with D5 last week. Yeah, let's go D1 this week. Okay. Okay, let's make him quick, okay? Yeah. Centurions like Gokuk. Gokuk. I'm going to go with Centurions in this one. It's too big of a game for them not to, to win. Uh, if they lose this game, I think their season's over. Okay, fair. Hopefully they show up. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully they do. A-team Holy Trollers. With the question marks of A-team's QB, I'm going Trollers. Same. And then Holy Trollers, Iron Rolls. You cannot pick it. 
shit, it's gonna be a late five o'clock game. Uh, man, that's exciting. Like, there's question marks with the Iron Wolves right now, given what happened last game. Like, who would have thought Iggy would have started that game, right? Besides, like, the f- a minute before the game. Yep. I think I'm gonna go with Trollers in this one. Alrighty, fair. Um, in a very close game. I, I see it being one on Converts. Okay, nice. Importance of Converts. Um, sorry? Importance of Converts. Yeah. Thunder Buddies, Red Raiders. Can I pick this game? Uh, it should be a good one, though. Yep. Ten Out Marvels. Huge game. Man, I, I just think these, like, Thunder Buddies, Outlaws, Marvels team have such a hard, are such a hard matchup. I know, I know. When they come against the Ten Out, right? I'm going to Ten Out. I'm going Marvels. Why? It's similar to why you pick Centurions. It's a game they need more. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Spread Gang, Nice CDs. I'm going Nice CDs. I'm going Nice CDs in a one possession game. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be a close one. Uh, Division 3 now. Chiefs Double Dippers. Can't pick it. Wow. Are you... You're not there, eh? I'm going Double Dippers then. Okay. Uh, when the Chiefs are missing the Dan Marino. Hey, come on. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> He's leaving you. Let's go. We got this. Uh, Panache, Idaho. Is uh, Brady back? No. Not this week. Okay. I'm still going Idaho. Do you know where they're going to get a sub for them at quarterback? No, but I assume it's going to be a good player. I assume so. So I'm going to go Idaho in a very one in a close one possession game. Okay. I like it. Chiefs doubleheader, Arnold's. Okay. I'm going with Chiefs in this one. Nice. Let's go, boys. Uh, ben Rossas. <sighs> Gotta be Ben. I'm going Ben. Yeah, that sauce is not going to be... Uh, Ross, I love you guys. Raw enough to draw and drown those beans. I picked you guys last week. I'm not bold enough to pick you guys back to back. You weeks. picked them like three weeks. You did pick them back to back. That's weeks. true. I'm <laughs> bold enough to pick back to back to back weeks. Uh, Division four. Oof, good game. Utah Mustard Tigers. Oof, this I'm is, going this Utah. Is what we're gonna see if Mustard Tigers are missing athleticism, right? I was just gonna say I'm going Idaho. I'm sorry, I'm going Utah because of athleticism. I'm going Mustard Tigers. Heidi. Phoenix Randoms. Randoms. I don't know why, but I'm going Phoenix. Yeah? I don't know why. Like, I, they got to win this game. Yeah, that's somebody's going to go with you. Ben Low, Fat Drama Club. Missing those beans. Wow. Simone Valley Cat's back for this game. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to go Ben Low, Fat also. Okay. Uh, Revenant's Airborne. I think Marvin will be playing this game. And okay. he will be running all over that Airborne team. I'm going to get Revenant's. I'm going Revenant's as well. Good, good match of two running quarterbacks, Simon McSweeney. Uh, yep. Maybe uh, Bib Marnard will be throwing in that game. Who knows? Oh, yeah. True. Division 5. TD Hunters, Heisenberg. Hunters. Gotta go with the Hunters. Uh, Phoenix are going 2-0 this weekend after going 0-2 last weekend. Beating I think Cobra they go Kai. 1-1 and they beat Cobra Kai. Because oh, yeah, I picked it against Phoenix. Yeah, yeah. I got Phoenix this game, though. What were they playing before? Can't remember. Randoms. Randoms. Uh, Lesniaks. And <laughs> they changed it from Misfit <laughs> to Lesniaks, but they're... Their abbreviation is still MIS on the site. That's pretty cool. Well, I just think is they, they manually change their name, but you can't change your your abbreviation. It's called abbreviation, right? Yeah. Uh, it's like John needs to change that. Another glitch in the MFL. Why is it? It's not a glitch. Well, why isn't it? Like a, a glitch in my mind is if like you change the name and it's not showing as changed. That'd be a glitch. But why doesn't this say the Desniacs then? Oh, because you choose your team name and yeah. you choose what you want your abbreviation to be. Oh, like, so it's the Misfits who haven't changed it. Well, the Misfits cannot manually change that. So I'm saying, like, the captain can change the team name. We have yeah. access to change the team name. Yeah. We don't have access to change that. The Does captain John... has to let John know they want to change, basically. Okay. So John is but... slacking, basically. Well, no, because John could not be aware that they changed the name because they changed it themselves. Well, he's still slacking because he checked the website. <laughs> Misfits from Osa Crew. Uh, Lesniaks from Osa Crew. M- Misfits. Lesniaks. <laughs> uh, so uh, you're going Armadillos, I'm going Vultures? Yes. I'm going Armadillos. If you're wondering why, make sure you listen a few minutes back. Yes. We spoke about it already. Oh, that's a tight one. Yeah. Man. A lot of good games this that's weekend. That's going to be my bold prediction. A lot of good games this weekend, eh? There is a lot of good games this weekend. It's going to be fun. I really just like missing MFL. Yeah, It'll dude, be the last time. You're doing time. a lot lately, eh? Hey, I got my weddings to go to as well, okay? <laughs> yeah, preach. Uh, last game, last weekend I'm going to be missing, though. Actually, hopefully it rains on Saturday, so I don't have to go golfing, even though I can't golf for shh. Um, bold predictions. I'm going to go first. Okay, you go I'm going to go two bold predictions, okay? I'm going to start with this game right here. Armadillos, Vultures. Let's try to cover all divisions. You do two, I'll do two, and then we'll like, maybe you should do one for the, that last division. Good call. I like it. Or we're, not, we're skipping Ross already. Yeah. Okay, fair. We spoke about him enough. Touche. Okay, Armadillos, Vultures. I say there will be... Tick-tock. 
four receivers in this game. Okay. That have at least three touchdowns. Do you know what our bold predictions were for last week? No. No? No. I probably got it right, though. That's my bold prediction, Terry. Armadillos, vultures, two receivers on each team that get through at least three t- receiving touchdowns. Okay. Uh, division four. Yeah. Utah must have Oh, no. I wanted to do D4. No, you're going to do five. I'll do four. You do no, three. No, I want to do four. Oh, too bad. I got two of them. Okay, I'm doing four again. Okay. So you do, you'll do the next one. Okay. Uh, Utah Mustard Tigers. Yeah. Both quarterbacks combined for at least 12 touchdowns. Okay. And less than two, tu- less than two interceptions. Okay. Uh, Revenant's Airborne. Both quarterbacks combined for... You stole mine. <laughs> How much were you going to say? Uh, rush for over? Yeah. I was going to say 170. Okay, that's way bolder than what I was going to say. I was going to say over 100. Over 100? And five total touchdowns. Bro, Marvin can run 50 yards on his knees. But he doesn't. That's the thing. He can, but he doesn't. Except for the fact that he does. Not really. Not as much as he did like earlier on in the season. Yeah, touche. Ryan McSweeney can run for 50 yards on his butt. Well, he'd be down. He'd be about play would not continue, right? Because if your butt touches the ground, like. But no, he's capable of. That's how good he is. Like, okay, so he completely butchered my. Okay, never mind. I'm not doing D4. So, bull prediction division three. Okay. Bull prediction div three. Ben Rossos uh, will score less than 14 combined points. Wow. Don't they have good offenses? They also have good defenses. Um, I feel like it's Christmas, so we're going to give the people even more bold predictions. Nice. If I say uh, Chiefs go 0-2, would it be bold? Yeah. Or it's not bold because you're not there? No, I still think it's bold. We have okay. a good enough team, too. So the win, undefeated, only under, left undefeated team in D3 will go win this this weekend. Chiefs, you heard this guy. Come on, prove him wrong. Let's go, boys. Gotta make it entertaining. All right, Division Two, Division Two. Okay. Uh, if I tell the over under this game's 100 points, are you taking the over or the under? Thunderbirds, Ro- Ross. No, Tanon Ta- Marvels. I'm taking the under. Taking the under? Yeah. Okay, I think this game's going over 100 points. I like it. That's my typical prediction. Huh? That's your like typical it. prediction. Yeah, like you it. took the under, you soft. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Child. <laughs> Could have been worse that you're going to see something else. All right, D1. You don't got a bull prediction for D2? Okay, you know what? I have a feeling you're going to ask me. D2 bull prediction. Spritz gang Does versus... Does not punt again. Sp- <laughs> yes, that too. Spritz gang, nice CDs. Hmm. Chris quarterbacks this game. He has three rushing TDs. Okay. D1. You go first. Hold on. Mm-hmm. 18 Wall Troll is going to be fun. It's going to be Andrew against his former team. Yeah. They already played this season, didn't they? Yes, they did. Holy Troll's Iron Wolves will be fun because we had a very close game. And Tatarian's Gold Cup will be fun because it's D1. So, my bull prediction will be. Actually, you go first. <clears throat> Okay, so Max went 0 and 2 yesterday uh, last week. Mm-hmm. I say he goes. Um, wait, who are they playing in D two? Marvels are playing ten outs. I picked him to lose there, but he's gonna go two and zero in D one. Okay, uh, sorry, yeah, two and zero in D one. Yeah, and he's gonna throw for over six hundred and fifty yards, Oof. and at least thirteen touchdowns. So two are like numbers. Yeah, basically. I'm mad, Max. You heard it. I'm gonna go. Okay, because you're going those games, I'm gonna go Centurions, go Cock. I'm gonna say. I got another one. I don't know why I'm feeling so generous. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I say, you want to go or no? Go first. Go first. Yeah, you need more time, eh? No, go first. You're so bad on both of Let you go first. So we know how good Russia Francis is for Centurions, right? Yes. I got Gabash on both rushing for more yards than Dom in this game. For real? Yeah. Fine. With that in mind, I got Dom for rushing over 85 yards in this game. (laughs) Okay. You're going to be bold? I'm going to be bold right back. That's it for today? That's it, eh? I feel like we're missing something. you enjoyed the show? Yes. I don't think it was as funny as last week. No, I don't think it was. Well, we filmed it like 12 hours later than this time. (laughs) That's true. John was complaining that we weren't serious enough, right? So No. Bro, that's a joke, bro. I think John prefers when we're not serious, right? Yeah, for real. Johnny, um, we haven't seen Mr. and Mrs. Evans in a while, eh? No, but they have been commenting on the videos. It's true. They definitely have been. Um... Heal up those who need healing up. Yeah. Dave, you obviously hope your surgery goes well Thank for you. real. Uh, good luck with that. The MFL.
all of us were cheering for you in the hospital. Uh, go Terry, go Terry. Buy and, some flowers. Uh, oh yeah, we'll, uh, well, come on now. Don't get too greedy. <laughs> but uh, yes, hopefully we'll see you at the field this week. Well, if we not, won't. we forgive you. Um, and uh, yeah. That's it. Are we cl we're close-ish to the midway point, eh? Yeah, we gotta do your report cards soon, eh? That is true. Gotta get Someone has to remind us. If no one reminds us, uh, yes, we might forget. forget. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, we're still doing the um, uh, tech contest, right? Yeah. Okay. Comment. We'll decide the rules later, but just comment on our videos. Just do your good stuff. Show your girlfriends, your boyfriends, uh, your grandparents, other fathers. Cats. Random people on the street. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Bobos would love uh, anything <laughs> to look at, really. See you guys soon. Stay safe. Yes, yeah, see you guys. See you soon.